Our purpose before you today is real simple. We want to take this opportunity utilizing social media for something more than just mere entertainment. Hear me clearly on this. God's given us an assignment and an agenda to release the supernatural power over a generation of people and to cause people to walk in the fullness of the authority. That's our assignment. That's Brendan and I's assignment. It's not a popular assignment. And quite honestly, quite candidly, it takes hungry people to come out of their, their comfort zone. I want you to hear me clearly. <clears throat> we live in a day when, where there's a lot of things going on and people deal with things based upon convenience. In other words, our lives are so busy doing a lot of things that if we're going to get involved in something, it has to be convenient. But I submit to you right now that doing the things of God is not going to always be convenient. And I just need to let you know that. It's important to understand that if we're going to achieve everything that we can in Christ, we have to be open to his leading. So this is going to tie into what we want to talk about today. We have to understand that the will of God will take us out of our comfort zone and bring us into another realm. Because most of us, if we have the choice, we will do things within our sphere of convenience and things that pretty much we want to do. But when we deal with the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, sometimes it's not going to be about me, myself, and I, and, and, and what's best for me. Sometimes in the process of doing what's best for God can be what's best for you. So we're going to take the time to release this over you right now. Hallelujah. Now it's important to note some things right now. For those of you, because based upon what I've seen in the 30-something years I've been born again and in ministry, I've seen a lot of people that do not know what they're called to do, what their purpose is in life. And these are born-again believers, and in a lot of cases, tongue-talking, spirit-filled believers that sometimes struggle to know what God's called them to do. So we're going to take the time to release this over you today. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're going to take the time to expound on the Word today. So we're going to start with the first scripture that's going to be in St. John chapter 14. St. John chapter 14, verse number 15. We're going to tie this together. Now, now, for all of you that are listening to us, if you have not subscribed, just feel free to subscribe so that way you can get updates on anything that, that, that comes through. We don't necessarily, like I said, we, we're going to do videos as the Lord leads us to, but we want you to take this into consideration. It's not just about teaching a lesson. We want to release something into the sphere of your home, in the sphere of your car, the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because this is the thing. Those that listen to radio and watch TV, their spirits is being released across these, these mediums. And many times it's not glorifying God. So when we talk about apostolic authority, one of my assignments is an apostle is to release an anointing. So we want to take the time to release an anointing wherever you are. And we want to come in agreement for every prayer. And I want you to hear me. I need prayer too. So that's the bottom line. So, so we, we want to teach, preach. But we want to administer, we want to come in agreement with you, okay? So let's tie this together. Verse 14, no, no, chapter 14, verse 14 of St. John. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither know of him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you. That's very key. And he shall be in you. So, now listen. Under the, before Jesus died and was resurrected, the Holy Ghost had not fallen. But he was speaking to the disciples from the standpoint of, of how they was operating in the things of God at that point. The Spirit of God dwelleth with them. And in, under the, in, in the Old Covenant, the Spirit of the Lord came upon people and walked with them when they did certain aspects of things. Under the Old Testament, the anointing, was primarily with the priest, the king, and the prophet. But under the New Testament, we have the ability now to walk in the presence of God in a greater dimension. So what we want to do is we want to activate in every, that in every one of you. Under, be aware of the power 
and the access that you have to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're tying this together in a, in a nice little bow. So he said, the scripture says, he dwelleth with, 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 with him, and he dwelleth with the disciples, and he shall be in you. That is a promise of scripture that would take place after Jesus ascended up to heaven, after he died and was resurrected, and then, and then he went back to heaven. And then the church, beginning in the book of Acts, in the upper room, the Holy Ghost fell, and it, it empowered them in a very, very tangible way. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you un I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But you see me because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. So we understand the power. What God wants to do is connect you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if, he wants to connect you in the spirit of unity with heaven. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it like that. So, we're taking the time to lay a foundation for the access that you have spiritually. Because a lot of people that are listening to me right now, and there's people that, that are, are faithful church members, but don't understand the power and authority that they actually walk in. So, we're going to take the time to do some teaching in regards to that right now. All right? So, it says, He that keepeth my commandments... There's he that did yeah, half my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, not the, not the betrayer. Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Now this is how Jesus answers him. He said, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father, who, hallelujah, will love him. And I will come unto him and make my abode with him. In other words, he's going he's gonna to habitate with you. That's powerful. That's a promise of scripture. I want you to hear me. For those of you that, that are born again and always feel that you're alone, I want you to know this is a promise of scripture that you have the ability to access to. This is a catalyst and a key to you walking in the supernatural power of God. It is very challenging to convey a God and walk in the things of God that we're talking about, and you don't understand the intimacy that you have by inheritance. Does everybody understand that? There's an intimacy that you have by inheritance. Jesus himself, even when, even when things was going on, Jesus made this declaration that he was not alone. That's very powerful. He knew that all the resources of the Father and heaven was in his corner. He said his Father was with him, basically what he was saying. And we want you to know that the Spirit of the Lord is with you right now. So we want you to be encouraged by this right now as we continue. Hallelujah. So let's, let's, con let's continue to read this right now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Let's deal with a little bit of a posture of Jesus. Jesus came in the name of the Father. Jesus came to give glory to the Father. The same way that at the same way the New Testament church has, has is here to give glory to the name of Jesus because Jesus' name was glorified. The same way we are to glorify Jesus through the Holy Ghost is the same way Jesus glorified the Father through the Holy Ghost. So we see the transition. All right. Watch this. Verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, yet being present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever things I have said unto you. Now, we understand he's talking to the disciples, but you got to understand that the, God, that the job of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, <clears throat> is to bring you to a place where he teaches you all things. This is important because we live in a day where there's a lot of conflict between People about what is the right way to go. There is a right way in the Holy Ghost. There is a correct way in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We live in a day where there's a lot of error. And we have to derive that in a place where there's error, God is not in. Because we're dealing here with the, with, with, with the comforter. His job is to teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. That means... The treasure chest of heaven 
It's open to the born-again believer who understands this. As a believer, you don't have to walk in ignorance concerning God's word, concerning God's plan for his life. So let's deal with this. God is all-knowing, is all -knowing, omnipotent, right? He knows everything about you. That includes your past, present, and future. So with that said, give you this illustration. When we, when we prophesy to minister to people, many times we, we, pre, we prophesy based upon where they've been, where they are, and where they're going. The Holy Ghost's job is to bring to you what heaven is saying about you. Hallelujah. Oh, what heaven is saying about you in relation to where you've been and where you are right now. That's powerful. So, anytime we're dealing with the Holy Ghost, we're dealing with the omnipotence, all-knowing revelation of God. And this is a win-win situation, whether you believe it or not. This is a very powerful situation for you. Because understanding this means God can bring you into a realm of victory, power, and authority from a different level. Because if you feel lost today, that can change. Hallelujah. Starting this hour. We want to encourage you to get, develop an intimate relationship with the God of the Bible and the power of the Holy Ghost. Under the New Testament church, the Holy Spirit is here in this three-dimensional world to be the facilitator of the plan of God for heaven, the plan of God in your life, and to let you know things to come because the Holy Ghost knows what is happening down the road. So, the Holy Ghost makes you relevant for today. In every capacity, the Holy Ghost makes you relevant, be, makes you current. He gives you the revelation of what is happening right now in the body of Christ, what needs to happen, what needs to happen in your life, what is happening in the world as this world draws to a close. The Holy Ghost has go, the Holy Ghost knows all of that because Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, everybody is in synchronization. So you have the ability to be on the cutting edge of what God is doing in every aspect. That includes your life as well. So you don't have to be ignorant about what God is saying to you, about you, and about this word. Now, God does use ministers who operate under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to be a catalyst to light a fire and speak those things to be relevant. God does do that. So, But we have to make a distinction between a lot of the teaching and preaching that goes on that is from the wisdom of men as compared to to the, to the divine wisdom and revelation of God, they're not the same. Hallelujah. We want to, anytime we preach or teach, it's not just about that. It's about releasing the revelated word that will cause you to grow closer to Christ. Hallelujah. That you can be mature and walk in the things of God. That is so important. Hallelujah. So we're taking the time to do this right now in a very powerful and tangible way. All right, so let's keep on going. Let's go to, to St. John. Chapter 16, St. John chapter 16, we're going to tie this together in a nice little bow. Hallelujah. We're going to start at verse number five. Hallelujah. And it says, but now I go, now, now Jesus is preparing his disciples for, for his departure. It says, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. That's powerful. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So, so the Holy Spirit could not come till after Jesus left the scene. Hallelujah. And when he has come, when he has come, I mean, he's a person, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Now watch this. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So he's tying it together. There's certain things that could not be said because the timing was not there. But watch this. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That's powerful. Whatever she, he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That is the job of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He will guide you in all truth. He won't force you, but he will guide you into all truth. And he will speak not of himself. So when the Holy Ghost speaks, he speaks not of his own accord, but he speaks with the, with the unity and agreement of what's going on in heaven, Father and Son, and the mind of God.
for what's going on in your life. That's powerful, y'all. And And he be led, hallelujah. He shall speak and he will show you things to come. Watch this. So you don't have to be worried about your future when you're in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will show you what I mean what direction your future is headed. The wisdom of God is to prepare you for what's what's the coming. The Holy Ghost already knows what the future is. The Spirit of God will know you the things to come. Now, you want to be on the cutting edge of what God is doing through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, watch this in verse number 14. He says, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. The same way the whole, the Jesus through the Holy Ghost glorified the Father. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is going to glorify Jesus in, in the New Testament church. Watch this. All, all things that the Father hath are mine, Therefore I said, he shall, he shall take of mine and show it unto you. So we see everybody's operating in synchronization. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to hear me clearly. In Matthew chapter 3, Jesus could not even begin his ministry. He did not begin his ministry. Till after the water baptism, he received the power of the Holy Ghost. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost where the Spirit of God descended upon him I mean, as a dove. Then he went into the wilderness, oh, to be tempted by the devil. You understand the sequence here? And then after that, he came out in the power of the Spirit. That's what the scripture says, the power of the Spirit. How powerful do you feel today? How powerful do you feel in the Spirit today? Oh, If you don't feel that way, let the revelation power of the Holy Ghost wake you up in, 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 to an illumination of the power that you possess in the kingdom of God. Now, let's deal with this kingdom jurisdiction here. We want you to understand that as kingdom people, God is concerned about cities, regions, jurisdictions. Hallelujah. Even when you look in Luke chapter 10, when he, when he sent the 70 out, they covered a region and a jurisdiction. And even when we read this, um, the epistles in the New Testament, Paul addressed letters to areas. The churches of Galatia, the church at Corinth, the church at Rome, at Rome, the Romans, hallelujah. All of these things, I mean, because again, you have brothers and sisters that do that live in different countries. You have brothers and sisters that live in the country where we are, uh, hallelujah, and in the same state, but they don't go to, to your local congregation. Hallelujah. I want you to understand something that the body of Christ is bigger. Than one, than one group of believers. So what God wants you to help you to understand is that the jurisdiction is not confined to a small little, little place or location. Why is what I'm saying relevant? Because with the Holy Ghost, you can recognize that. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost and the revelation of the Holy Ghost, you have enough discernment to know that you have other brothers and sisters. Even if you don't know verse and scripture pervade them, if somebody's talking truth, even if you don't know that, the Holy Spirit should go off in you and let you know, hey, this is real. But also, too, the Holy Ghost should let you know when something is not right. The Holy Ghost should also let you know when you're dealing with another true brother and sister in Christ. This will keep you from blaspheming the Holy Ghost and blaspheming the work of God because you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you that gives you the ability to recognize when something's of God and something's not of God so that you, you won't be in ignorance calling stuff the devil when it's of God. When you have the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and the sensitivity of the Holy Ghost, in order for a person like that to say something is not of God, they have to do it by an act of their will. And that's from a different spirit. So the, the Holy Spirit is our protection. So we can learn the truth of God because the scripture said that we will be guided into all truth. So that means we don't have to be ignorant. That will protect us. From, from fighting against God and fighting against the things that are of God, thinking that they're the devil when they're not. Hallelujah. God put this into the New Testament church, and in addition to walking in the power of God, hallelujah, we have the ability to know what is freely given to us by God and be able to embrace our other brothers and sisters who may be different from us, but they still carry the same spirit. That is very powerful. Hallelujah. So, when we have the Holy Spirit, when we have him, we now have the ability to walk in unity with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, this is powerful. We're going to take the time to release something over you. We declare heaven on earth in your home right now, wherever you are. 
We declare heaven on earth in the name of Jesus. We declare the freedom of the Holy Ghost in your life here and now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, as we close, now, we're going to have, like I said, when we, when we, when, when we as, as, you, as you look at this video, you're going to see in the description area, you're going to see, you, you're going to see um, an area right now, a link. You're going to see a link that's going to give you an opportunity to access the last conference that we did, the last conference that we do. We, we, we do, we do a conference call once a week. Hallelujah. And you're going to have an opportunity with this link to access the conference call um, that, that we did just, just recently. And now, mind you, I want you to hear me clearly. We know that everybody's busy. So, since what we do is information-based, you ain't got to necessarily just sit there and just look at it. Or even any, any of our videos. All you do is just put it on and let that anointing, let the Word of God Permeate your spirit because you can hear. We're not. We, we don't have a clown suit on. We're not doing tricks or anything like that. All you have to do is just listen. So that way, we can. You can maximize your time concerning this. Now, if you have any comments about anything that that is said during these during these videos, you're welcome to give your comments below. Seriously, we want you to be a participant in what's going on. And if you like it, if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe to it. And if you feel if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Like I said, it is what it is. <laughs> we want we want to know that these things are being a blessing to you. Hallelujah! It's there. Hallelujah! And if you and if they're a blessing to you, feel free to share them with somebody else. Hallelujah! But we do a conference call once a week, most Mondays and then some Tuesdays. Those conference calls are we try to keep them around eight o'clock Central Time. Eight o'clock Central Time is the time. Now, when you look into the description, we're going to give you. The phone number and the access code that you that you can utilize those things. Th those things are not going to be changed unless we take the time to let people know in advance as far as the number and the access code. That number is in there until we change that. But the times Monday, Tuesday may change. Those of you that listen to us uh, on the conference call, you you you'll obviously know ahead of time. So for those of you that participate, we want to give you an opportunity. To receive something in addition to these minerals, to addition to these videos, we pray God's blessing over you. We declare ridiculous, hilarious, roll upon the ground, laughable favor, and we declare the supernatural power of God be released over your life right now. This is Apostle Young. We'll be talking to you again in the near future. God bless you.